We're here. Hi, guys. Welcome to the chat with Mindy. I'm so excited that you guys are joining me today. So my name is Jan Evangelista, for those of you who don't know me, um, of Grace and Color, and I have with me um, the beautiful and lovely Mindy Kiker, who is from, she is one of the co-hosts of um, a ministry, a whole ministry called Flourish, which we're going to learn a little bit about, but also, more specifically, the Flourish Bible Journaling Conference that you may have heard me talking a little bit about recently. And she has been so gracious to come on board and say hello to us and um, share a little bit about her of her heart with us and a little bit about the conference and just a little bit about the things, all the things. So if you are here, if you are come on and you have any questions for Mindy, don't hesitate to let me know. Put them in the comments. If you are here and you um, just, just let me know that you're here. Just say hello. Say, hey, I'm here, Jennifer. I'm here. Uh, because, you know, I always love to know that you're here. Comment below. And, um, and yeah, it'll be super fun. Now, otherwise, um, I'm going to mute this. Otherwise, um, if you watch me as a replay, I still want to know that you're here. And you can still ask questions because I can still contact Mindy if you have any serious questions for her. Okay. So I have, the, I have an inside scoop for a little bit of time to be able to get in touch with her. <laughs> So holler at me if you um, if you want to know anything or just um, have been encouraged by this conference, if you've already been a part of it. Um, I know that she would be super encouraged to hear that. And um, and so do really all of us who have been involved with it. And so, yeah, so let us know anytime. First of all, I would like for Mindy to introduce herself, tell us a little bit about herself, about her partner in crime, um, and their um, vision in establishing or in coming up with the idea for this conference um, and a little bit about the conference. And, uh, and then I also want her this morning, if you guys saw my Facebook Live and Instagram Live, we talked about Psalm 52, which Psalm 52, 8 was the scripture that they have used as um, their the base scripture for the conference. And I just really wanted her to share a little bit with us about why they chose that scripture and kind of what it means to her. So Mindy, I'm gonna let you have the mic for a minute and, um, and introduce yourself. Thank you. And I'll let everybody know that we're here. Yes. Hi ladies, it's such a delight to be here in your Grace and Color community. Jen, thanks for having me and thanks for being such a big part of the Flourish Bible Journaling Conference. You are, you have a big, glorious personality, and it's been a delight to get to partner with you in the conference. So I'm tuning in from Gainesville, Florida, just a little bit south of where Jen is in Georgia. And although, you know, the Southern accent does not translate down into here into Florida quite the way it does. No, it doesn't are very disappointing, aren't they? <laughs> Gainesville is is more Southern though than it is when you go a little bit further South in Florida, so. Yes, although even, I think we're a university town, so it's very mm -hmm. diffuse. But I think what happens often in Florida is in the cities, you don't have much accent, but even right outside the cities, you start to get a little more accent. Yeah, certainly like up into the panhandle and. But my parents are both um, Midwestern farm stock, so I didn't really have much chance. I was raised in Arizona and Hawaii and Florida. I spent a bit of time. Oh my goodness! In so you know, yeah, you're there, all over. There was no. Well, problem. so those of you who know me know one of the reasons that Mindy and I have connected so well because I'm a Gator as well. Yes. So yes, so I'm a Florida Gator. So there you go. <laughs> My okay. husband's a second generation UF professor. So uh, we've got we've got a lot of gator in our blood for um, many decades. And um, let's see, my husband and I both did some graduate work overseas. We spent 11 years in South Africa and actually started our family there. So that's a very dear and precious land. It's our second home. Um, and we, we try to go back as often as we can. So um, I have four boys from 17 down to seven. 
So we have a pretty thumping household. Um, I have homeschooled my children for many, many years. Um, the older two are in high school now and absolutely loving that. I think they're loving high school as much as they are loving not having to be under the direct tutelage of their mother any longer. I don't know why that would be. I'm one of the funnest <laughs> people I know. But somehow when it's your mom, it's just not quite the same thing. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Yeah. But I still homeschool the younger two. I have a fourth grader and a first grader. So we have a good time um, trying to acquire some basic knowledge as well as explore the world as best we can. And um, I was just very busy, contented at home. Um, I, I had a real thriving career through my 20s and 30s. And um, when the Lord chose to call me into motherhood, I think he, he just knows my personality. It's I throw myself into whatever I'm doing. I'm not super good at multitasking um, because I want to do everything 100%. And when you only have 100% and you're doing four different <laughs> things, you really don't have 400%. And then that leads to many ailments and maladies. <laughs> So when I became a mom, um, the Lord very kindly said, I would really like you to just focus on being a mom. And it was like pulling all my teeth out. I was like, what? Interesting. Yes, it was a very strange part of my journey, but I think he really wanted me to discover that my value is just who I am as his daughter. It's mm -hmm. not what I'm doing for other people. I served in the humility of my home <laughs> and I thrived and I flourished and it was glorious and fabulous. Mm -hmm. Once I finally got my tea, my dentures back in place. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little bit agonizing for about 24 months while I fought with the Lord. Um, but eventually I said yes. And you know, when you say yes to what he's asking you to do, no matter what it is, quite frankly, there is always such joy and freedom mm -hmm. that comes. Mm -hmm. So good. Mm -hmm. and, I and isn't it interesting how sometimes we don't say yes right away when we know really and truly that probably it, I mean, that it is for our best? Yes, it, we're so stubborn. That, we are stubborn. Ah, I, keep, I think maybe gradually, year by year, um, I get a little bit better at saying yes, a little bit quicker. But for goodness sakes, yeah, I, I <laughs> like this is the God of the universe who loves me, who created me, who knows what's best for me. And I stand there and say, uh, no thanks. It's like, Oh, honey. <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I was just beavering away happily in my home, homeschooling. You know, I had four children at home at that stage. And um, I just felt this little urging after 12 years of truly serving very quietly at home. The Lord, um, somebody invited me to... Um, take over their ministry. And I was like, well, no, I'm content at home. <laughs> and the, it was like the Lord said, oh, guess what? We're going into a new season. I was like, mm -hmm. wait a second. No, don't you remember? I finally submitted and now I mm -hmm. found all this joy and contentment. And do you remember how hard that was for me to get to that place? What do you mean a new season? <laughs> yes. And I'm going to interrupt you here and say that that is a fantastic life point in and of itself. Right? How sometimes we go kicking and screaming into something that God calls us to do, whether it's to stay at home, whether it's to go back to work, whether it, you know, whether it's a particular ministry, whatever it is, we go kicking and screaming into it. Then we find such joy and fulfillment and then God in all of his wisdom and sovereignty 
moves us out of that into something else. And what a beautiful thing that our lives are that way and that our lives are directed by him. And ladies, if you are in a position where you feel like God is prompting you in a new direction, he actually may be, and he may be taking you out of your comfort zone that may have taken you a while to get into <laughs> in order to, you know, to, to further his kingdom. And it's for your good and his glory if you're trusting in him. Oh, so yeah. what a beautiful thing. So you decided, so you, 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 you were comfy, you were cozy, and then all of a sudden you were called to do something different. Yes. And so out of that was really born Flourish. Jenny and I were great friends, and um, I sort of got dragged by invitation into ministry, and, and that sort of enabled me, I think, to hear the, the Lord. You know, a ball in motion is easier mm -hmm. to change direction mm -hmm. than a ball that is stationary. So the Lord got me in motion and then he just started to birth flourish in my heart. Simultaneous to that, so my partner in crime is Jenny Cokert, the beautiful and lovely Jenny Cokert, originally from Miami, Florida, and who now lives in Kentucky. Um, we, we just became fast friends. We were part of a Bible study. A mutual friend introduced us to each other. And I think we just noticed in one another a similar spirit of just living and breathing, passionate to encourage other women in their walk with the Lord with our real, transparent, genuine stories. Because, you know, we've mm -hmm. been through a lot, both of us little girls, and we've got some tales to tell of how God is good. No matter mm -hmm. how broken your situation looks, no matter how ugly your story gets, God can redeem it when you turn to him and take hold and say yes. yes. So in the midst of us discovering this familiar passion in one another, um, we just in our prayers together and our conversations together felt the Lord birthing flourish in both of our hearts. And we eventually, through the course of some months, said, do you think this is something that we're supposed to do together? And the Lord said, yes. And we were two happy girls. And when was this now? This was when, when did Flora start? November 2016. So not long ago. OK. OK. So Grace and Color was birthed in October of 2016. So. Oh. Fun. Yeah, so we're, we're little babies on the same uh, That's right. timeline journey. And um, so our purpose is what the Lord called us to encourage in the body of Christ is for women to passionately pursue God and his word. Everything we do is founded in the word. I think, Jen, that's another way that we really connect um, because the, the foundation of the word of God getting into mm -hmm. the word, allowing it to speak. God brings truth. He brings immediate um, revelation to us through his word. We can always count mm -hmm. on it. And, um, and we just spend a lot of time in flourish of helping women sort of whet their appetite for the word. You know, a lot of people have kind of grown cold. Um, a lot of people just simply never ever were taught how to actually study the mm -hmm. word. And so we just spent a lot of time in a very easy, you know, where you are at in your season. We talk about fighting for your 15. Sometimes all you have is maybe three, five minute chunks in the day, but your heart is after God. It doesn't have to look a certain way. It's going to look different in different seasons of life. And so we're really there to help support women through that, through that process of getting back into the word and having it become a feast for them, having it to become honey on their tongues and life in their bones. So that's yes. really what we live and breathe at Flourish. Yes. And that is what I have, that I found when, um, when I was first introduced to you, when you introduced yourself, and actually I think it was Jenny that did introduce herself first. And I was looking into your ministry and that is just kind of the connection that I found. I mean, just your love for the word and your love for learning the word and teaching women to learn the word. And that is just, that is my passion and my word, my, you know, my yeah. 
just my joy as well, because I mean, it is, it is where our life comes from and um, is, and it is, it's the instruction that was given to us by our creator. And so, yeah, I just thought it was such a beautiful thing. And I really enjoy just your overall ministry. And ladies, if you're listening to me, you should, I put the links somewhere in the description. I don't know if they're up or down. I put them somewhere. Um, but, you know, check out their overall ministries because they're, they're doing so many things. And I'm going to talk briefly about some of the things. But, but honestly, these ladies have a heart for God. And they have a heart for women which is a beautiful thing and a heart just to um, express, um, to teach other women to express themselves in different ways. And I think that's one of the ways that the Bible journaling conference actually may have come to, to fruition as well, because this conference, for those of you who are not aware, and I see there are a couple people here that have said they've loved the conference already. Um, they're enjoying it. And I hope I'm glad to hear that. Um, but those um, of you who have, have been a part of this conference, and if you have not, you have four more days to sign up for free, by the way, four more days. And, and I made the link easy. It's just graceandcolor.com backslash flourish, um, and you can sign up. But the deal is, if you've been involved in that, or if you're going to be, you'll see that there's a lot of ways to worship creatively, and they all point back to getting into the Word. And yeah. to getting into and to learning about um, just the character of God and diving deeper into the gospel. So tell us, Mindy, how this particular aspect of your ministry, this is just one part of your big ministry, how this particular part of your ministry that I've been so blessed to be a part of kind of came about and, and what the thought processes were going into that. Sure. So um, the since our passion is so similar to yours, Jen, of just getting into the word, um, when we did a conference last year that was just called the Flourish Conference, and it was flourishing in life and faith and home. And mm -hmm. um, in the course of that, a couple of the speakers were involved in Bible journaling. And at the conclusion of that conference, they were like, you know what community would just be so amazing for this and it's so in line with your vision is bible journaling and we were like really <laughs> <laughs> that sounds exciting i mean neither of us is we're not creative in the traditional artistic yeah. sense jenny and i i mean i mean yeah. i i my mom was a very creative person and she gave me many opportunities and I enjoy doodling and you know creating posters and sketches I like decorating my home I love color you know I love I like jewelry I, I so I it's not like I don't have any artistic aesthetic mm -hmm. uh, sensibilities and I'm gonna have to interrupt you remember you don't have to be artistic to be creative that is right yes so you were created to be creative. So don't make me get on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm explaining our hesitancy because yeah. you were kind of locked in that old yes. mindset of, oh, no, yes. the Bible journaling world is for the artistic creatives. Yes. And and so we were we were fascinated to mm -hmm. discover and explore at the urging of our colleagues and friends who said no really i mean you and jenny are all about flourish is all about bible journaling we're like it is <laughs> <laughs> yes. yay because yes. we're all about the creative side and the connecting with god's word with all your senses mm -hmm. and um and so it was just so exciting for us to see that that overlap that connection and then the bible journaling world um opened us up to this whole new world of like-minded women that we were previously only kind of skirting around the edges just because we hadn't met all of you fabulous ladies jen evangelista and <laughs> others and the other 19 amazing women in the flourish bible journaling mm -hmm. conference 
So really it was born, you know, out of someone else seeing that Flourish would be a fantastic overlap for mm -hmm. creative expression. And I feel like what we have been able to bring to the conference is keeping it grounded, keeping Bible journaling grounded on the why. Of mm -hmm. We are doing yes. this because we are pursuing God, because we wanna have time in his presence. We're doing something with our hands, not merely to excite ourselves with color and creativity, although that is fabulous and it's energizing and it's fun. But the reason we're doing it is because we want to slow ourselves down and bring ourselves into his presence. We want to connect with him and find out what he has to say into our hearts through this magnificent and majestic word of God. And so that's really our, our heart. That's what we kind of brought to the conference. And then as we began to meet all of you ladies, Jen, um, we were like, oh, this is so exciting. I mean, it has inspired and encouraged mm -hmm. Jenny and me mm -hmm. that um, we, we, we have the same spirit as all of you. And it's given us like a new way of describing and expressing even what that is for Flourish. So it's been an exciting time for us as well. Yes, oh well, it, I, it has just exceeded all expectations uh, for me because it is so much more than a Bible journaling conference. Um, the Bible journaling component of it is super, super fun and creative. And like you said, I mean, you know, all the color and all the everything, but uh, the heart of it is the most striking thing, I think. And that is what has been such a blessing to me personally. And I know to so many women, and I've had people from my own audience that have been just really, really overwhelmed by how blessed they've been by the other speakers as well. And, 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 and it's opened up new audiences for people to be able to explore other ways, people that are classically, you know, maybe not the paint and draw kind of a person, but they're figuring out other ways in which they can express themselves creatively. Um, and even, even simple, simple ways that are a little different. And, and it all points back down to glorifying God in that and finding a way to glorify God so that, you know, we, whether you're, whether you're doing these creative things in order to learn better or in order to have something as a, as a remembrance, as literally just a uh, something so that you can go back and, and remind yourself of God's faithfulness or whatever the purpose of it is, whether it's community with other women, whether it's joining together with a group of women, giving them something to do, an activity that allows for fellowship, which is so beautiful because living in community is so important. As awesome as this online community is and as awesome as your online community is, it does not replace a local body of believers. And, and this is just one of the many ways women can gather together around a single task and, and you know, and, and, and fellowship with one another and learn about God's word in that way, too. So, yeah, there's so many, so many beautiful aspects to it. And you so know, I, I'm sure your, your Grace and Color ladies who have got to be part of the conference Facebook group have discovered mm -hmm. that there is some pretty thumping community there. It's like you can't quite keep up with all the excitement. It's right? a part-time job to read all the posts. It's just <laughs> so glorious. I mean, women mm -hmm. are having epiphanies. And then just to speak to the geographical connections is mm -hmm. women are finding each other. Mm -hmm. And they're setting up, they're getting together, Women are calling together groups of women in their church. Hey, let's watch these couple videos and bring your supplies and we'll do this together. Yes. So the, the connections and the community is happening there on that Facebook group. There have been a, a, a number, I have no idea how many, a lot of um, different little groups that have spun off yeah. just from women finding each other, even overseas. In fact, I got an email yesterday from a woman in France who says, there's no Bible journaling here. I am so excited about this. So? Yeah, yeah, no, it's amazing. And you know, this world is so small now. 
Um, my the people who heard me this morning right know that I've just come off of having a whole lot of company. Some of them were from are South African, some were um, Ugandan, one lives in the UAE, a couple lives in the UAE. I mean, and we were physically connected for about two weeks. But how beautiful is it is that our whole world is connected and 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 it just provides, it just opens up the gospel in all over this world and finding a way to even a way to outreach and to share the gospel with others that are yeah. not familiar with it um, is just such a beautiful thing. So, so you, we can kind of, you can kind of think of it as, is, you know, I think it's such a beautiful thing how it can become almost like we're sent, you can send out little missionaries all over to, um, to even in such a, a simple task as, coloring something that you think of from a Bible verse. Yes. I mean, that is something that can draw women together, can draw people together, and can in turn draw you closer to God, which is a beautiful thing. And so I, we thank you for obeying the call to create this and, and your other ministries as well, because, um, because anything that draws women to God is, is a beautiful thing. Yes. And I think what blesses us so much about the Bible journaling avenue is it's a very non-threatening way to invite women in. Um, and in Flourish, we're always looking for ways to sort of reduce those barriers to entry. You know, we don't want our language to be to, to create walls that make people feel like, oh, I couldn't be part of that. You know, it's... Mm -hmm. um, religious in the sense of creating barriers or blockades. Um, not we have got deep, great theology, certainly, but to make the, um, the presentation of that to be welcoming and invite, inviting and not threatening. And the creative side of, um, of Bible journaling and just all the creative expressions. You know, I love to cook and open up my home. I, we love to have people over for mm -hmm. a meal. I've been just, it felt the esteem of the Lord in that creative expression through the Bible mm -hmm. journaling conference. Mm -hmm. um, I love music and drama and poetry. And in the past, we've had creative evenings uh, where we invite everybody to bring a piece of music or a piece of literature that they love and everybody shares something. Yeah, that's creative expression, mm -hmm. that's community. And people will come into my home who might not come to church with me, but they encounter the Lord. And more often than once, I've had, especially women come back and say, I just need someone to talk to. And when I was in your home, I could tell that there was yeah. something different. And I could tell that you were someone who's safe and you're someone who's wise. Could I please share my story with you? And you know, that wouldn't have happened without the Lord creating that way of connecting through his creative expression um, in a non-threatening way. So that's, it's beautiful to me that Bible journaling can offer that. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I, I wanted to briefly before I know that I don't want to keep people too long that are watching us, but I wanted to briefly, you also have some other components of your ministry and that are also creative. Um, and I just wanted you to briefly let us know a little bit about what you're doing over at Flourish before um, I let you go. Just for people who are not familiar with your ministry and, um, and we kind of hear your heart on it. What are some of the uh, the practical things that are going on over there? Okay. Um, well, we we fairly regularly will come out with studies that we get involved with as a community. And at our website is flourishgathering.com. I'm sure um, Jen posted that for you. Um, we've got a shop with just some of our past studies. At the beginning of the year, we looked at feasting on God's word, and that was a fabulous study we did live as a community, and um, just looking at scriptures that have to do with um, taking in God's word and having it be sweet morsels that nourish our bodies. And then we did a study called His Love Is. <clears throat> and so Jenny and I have done a lot of writing. 
in the midst of all this, probably since last year, we felt the Lord just kind of bubbling up in our hearts. We would love to invite other women to be able to share their stories as well. And we have opened um, our blog from time to time as the Lord prompted us to, to women whose paths we encounter to write for our blog. Um, and they aren't necessarily bloggers, they're just friends and women. And that's been a really rewarding and ex esteeming experience for them and for us to be able to share their story with um, Flourish Women. But just um, at, the, at the beginning of the year, we finally felt the Lord release us to actually put together, hi Jane, I see Jane Brown from Flourish, um, to put together a course called Flourish Writers, The Power of Story, where we, um, we've created a five-week course to take women through the process of um, pressing into the Lord, hearing Him speak, allowing Him to pinpoint which of their life stories to start with and craft that story into a thousand-word devotional. Um, and yes. That's, that's beautiful. So we're, that is so awesome. It's, it's incredible. And we just had, we were blown away by the response. Um, it was, it's just our first time offering this as an actual course. And um, we thought- yeah, I gotta get it on your next one. That's awesome. <laughs> you do, we'll be writing it again this summer. This summer. So um, you can be on, on the lookout for that. But that has been, I mean, every week, we're, we're only halfway through it now. We're just entering into week mm -hmm. three of the six weeks. And um, Jenny and I are just like holding on by the seat of our pants. We cannot believe what the Lord is doing with the women who have boldly and courageously stepped out to say, yes, God, I want to write mm -hmm. my story for your glory. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to be ashamed of the past. I'm not going to be ashamed of the gospel. And, and I'm going to open my life as a testimony to overcome with the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony to overcome evil and to shine for good. The Lord is just all over it, Jen. I can't quite tell you how amazing. thrilled we are. It, it sounds amazing. And what a good example for for those of us who may not you know be able to be a part of something so organized right now we'll look out for that in the future because that sounds phenomenal yeah but what a good example of just just remembering god's faithfulness in your life um and we can all do this yeah. and remembering god's faithfulness in your life where he where you can go back and see that he's directed your steps where he's seen you through things, where he has been with you, um, whether you're going through a trial right now and you know he's right beside you, and taking those those experiences and recognizing that it's really just God's sovereignty and his goodness and his greatness. We talked today about God is great and God is good at the same time and 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 how he works in our lives and how we can use that, our testimony, as he's worked in our lives to shine the light on his glory and the beauty that he is. And, and that in turn will be, can be used by God. It's amazing to me that God allows us to be used to, you know, to display his glory for an onlooking world to see, because it's not just about me and my testimony. And it's not just about what God has done for me. He has done these things for me so that I can in turn show others his glory so that they can see his beauty and through the prompting of the Holy Spirit, through them, you know, following the call and, and actually God coming and rescuing them, they too will have a testimony that's similar and they will display his glory. And it just, it, and to me, it's God's goodness in allowing us to do that is such a beautiful thing. And you're, what you're doing right now in, in kind of equipping women to yes. use what they know, to, to, to shape what they know and their experiences and their testimony to become um, just an example for others of God's faithfulness 
is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And that's something we can all we can all do and learn learn to do. And I think I, I think that's it's encouraging and it's convicting a little bit and um, <laughs> and it's something that uh, you know it's another form of creativity, right? Exactly. So in, yeah. in fact, if people want to check on the um, Flourish blog, uh, Jenny and I have been writing a series on creativity based in Ephesians. And I just wrote on um, last week, um, it started off describing my struggle and battle. One of my main creative gifts is the written word. I mean, I love mm -hmm. to write and God has gifted me with a, um, an, an, a, a love and ability to express complex things, hopefully in a way that really gets into women's hearts. But in last week's blog post, I um, revealed some of the struggle over that gift because when God has given us something, Satan does not want to let that be. He will attack that thing, taint it, twist it mm -hmm. and the blog post started off um my tongue was a hot knife through butter my husband was the butter you know this did not go well <laughs> <laughs> yes yes and a fight we've all been there we have all been there <laughs> we have all been there well yeah no i think that um uh, i agree with you that it is we, we struggle with these things and we, we battle with our own gifts sometimes and wow. using our gifts for God's glory. And sometimes we do it successfully and sometimes we are not as successful in it. And, um, and thank goodness that we serve a God of grace, right? Who will pick us up when we choose to be disobedient and um, continue to, to, to put banks on that river so that we will walk in his grace and, and, you know, Walking in, in God's will, and I've, I've said this many times, so I mean, walking in the will of God is it's just not really that hard. It's just a matter of putting one foot in front of the other and knowing what his word says and getting into it and communicating with him and just knowing that you might curve a little bit, but he's going to put you back on path and if you're if you're sensitive to him. So so I'm, I'm glad to hear that you are. That's a, It's a beautiful thing. And, uh, and, and I did put a the little the link to your website um it's up above too but it's on the screen so um so go and check that out over there and really i encourage you ladies if you're not familiar with this ministry to check it out because um it is a beautiful way to use your creativity yes but also just just their hearts for for god and the gospel are just are just really special and i'm really glad to have gotten to know you ladies through this conference um, and I have gotten to know so many of the just just been in contact with so many of the other participants and the speakers, and and y'all, it's it's a um, it's been a joy. It really has. And so, if you have not signed up for this conference for some reason, if you're listening to my voice and you're watching me as a replay, um, go on over there to to the Flourish Bible Journaling Conference, grazingcolor.com backslash flourish. Go on over there. Sign up. You can sign up for free until the 18th, which is Friday night, right? Friday night. Is that Friday night? Yes. 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 So I know it's the 18th. I haven't, <laughs> I'm, I'm so off kilter with my dates. Um, so go and, and sign up and just be encouraged by the testimonies of these women. The Facebook group is just a beautiful expression of creativity, but also all skill levels, all skill sets, but the hearts of these women to just want to know God more is enough to encourage you. It really is. So it's, it's, um, it's a beautiful thing. There is a, they, they're offering a, a bundle. If you're kind of late and you don't have time to listen to everything and you don't, you want everything long term, they are offering a bundle that is so reasonably priced. If you have it in your budget to where you have lifetime access to everything, plus a whole bunch of really cool products. You'll see about all that. That is optional. Um, really, the goal is to, um, you know, to just to be encouraged to find a way that you, if your Bible study is a little stale, if you're feeling like you maybe don't really know what to do when you pick up your Bible and, you know, you have a Bible, we all have our Bibles, but we don't know what really to do with them. 
you know, I think you can really gain a good bit of encouragement from this. And um, and I, 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 I really encourage you to, to go and check it out. And um, and now that you know Mindy a little bit, I'll tell you, Jenny's got a very similar heart. And um, and these ladies are these ladies are are live are doing it right, doing it obediently with the grace with the grace of God. So I, I, I very appreciate it. Was there anything else that you wanted to share before we pop off and out of here? And um, anything else that you'd like to encourage women, any way that, that you would like to encourage women that they could, you know, get more out of this conference maybe, or, you know, just anything in particular? I was just thinking about the, um, you did a lovely job this morning with the Psalm 52.8, our theme verse for the conference. I'm like, yes, well, we we're going to talk about that. Yes. Flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. That's Psalm 52, 8. And thanks, Jen, this morning for sort of exegesing that for us and giving some background. It's a brilliant chapter mm -hmm. of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And um, I I mean, like, like you, I think you said, I could go on for two more hours. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I could too. I won't. But I did want to just mention one thing because it's um, – it's just an encouraging fact about trees. You, you did a lovely job of just talking about that olive tree. But I can see from your heart and from your grace and color community that that connection and community is so important to you. It is to us as well. Um, and one of the ways that Satan really attacks us, um, I mean, any, any human beings, but women especially, because I think God has really made women to connect with one another. One of the ways mm -hmm. that Satan really attacks us is to get us isolated. And, and this conference is really bringing people together. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're familiar with this analogy, Jen, but just having the tree be such a focus of this, ver this theme verse that we've chosen. Um, you know, the redwood forests in California, um, mm -hmm. some of the biggest trees in the world. So you would think that they have this tremendously deep, tap root, but they actually don't. The root structure of this massive redwood tree is actually shockingly shallow. But you know mm. what they do? They send out their roots horizontally instead of down, and they connect with and hold onto one another. The trees. That's how they stand. Mm -hmm. They don't stand by going deep as an individual they stand by reaching out and holding on to one another and i thought that was such a beautiful metaphor for what this conference has become jen as you said mm -hmm. just i mean it has blown away our expectations it one of my favorite verses is that god does more than we could hope or imagine because i think i can mm -hmm. hope pretty big and i think i can imagine pretty big but god is so good and so massive and so fabulous <clears throat> that even my little pea-sized brain is not able to comprehend even a fraction of what he can do. And I feel like he's done that with this conference. He does that with those great redwood trees. And he does that with all of us as women when we come together and say, I want to know how God made me. I don't want to let Satan thieve another day of making me think that I'm not creative. I was created in the image of the master creator. I am gonna look for this, I'm gonna hunt it out, and I'm gonna come into the company of women who can help to tell me their stories and show me, help to open my eyes to who I am as well. And then I can offer that back to the next sister that the Lord puts in my path. So I just, I hope that um, your community of women is I know that you get that here, and that's so fabulous, Jen. You're such a an inspiring leader, and you're charismatic, and you, your love for the Lord and your love for His Word is tangible, and I just so appreciate that about you. Um, and that your women could step out into the Bible Journaling Conference as well and find that with an even larger group of women all over the mm -hmm. world. So yes. that's my hope. Well, thank you. And thank you for uh, bringing us back to Psalm 52 because... Um, it is a beautiful psalm, and it is what your what your vision is is that 
that we become like the olive tree. So, and we flourish. Yeah. And um, and on that, I just thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And um, and if anybody has any questions for Mindy, please let me know. Feel free to leave it if you watch me as a replay. Um, let let me know. Um, let Mindy know that you're here. Let, if you've been involved in the conference, we of course would love to know about it. Any of the speakers that you've really been blessed by, um, you know, certainly they would be encouraged to hear. So feel free to. To feel, don't feel like just you know feel free to let me know any of them and tag them I don't care I just uh, we we really really uh, it's been a it's been a beautiful time and um, and I appreciate your call and your obedience and um, and I just pray that any of the women who are involved in that conference listening to this or involved in that conference just really really hear that part and grow in their faith and grow. Uh, in the word. So thank you so much, Mindy. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Jen. Appreciate it. And we will, I will be back in the morning, guys, for um, our morning psalm at 10 a.m. on Instagram and Facebook. Oh, I'm lying to you. You know, I have a field trip tomorrow. <laughs> it's the end of the school year. It's the end of the school year. Uh, I have a fourth grade field trip. So you can all be praying for me tomorrow morning. Uh, because I will be with a group of fourth graders. Yes. Um, but we will find a time. We'll, we will do it if we have to do it in the afternoon. We'll do our morning something in the afternoon. Every once in a while we do that. Um, so you can just check and watch for that. But regardless, um, I hope you guys have a blessed day. I hope you have a wonderful day, wonderful week, whatever time it is that you're watching this. I know I have some people that are across the world and it's the middle of the night for you. But whenever you watch me as a replay, I hope that you have a, a blessed day. And um, feel free to join us in the conference. You still have time. And if not, get in the word anyway. Just get in the word and let God show you his greatness and his goodness and his love. And we will see you next time. Bye.